Good afternoon folks, welcome back to Advanced Higher Chemistry. This is an addendum to my spectroscopy video um, because I'm getting old and forgot to put something in that appeared a couple of years back in the syllabus. Um, the two things I'd like to talk about today, number one is just a very, very brief, there's page uh, 15 from your data book, um, which we've never looked at before uh, because we never needed to. Um, and the reason I'm going to talk about this is just as a quick memory aid, if you're not a natural physicist and you forget the connection between the colours and the ends of the spectrum in terms of wavelength and nanometers, then just a primer here. We can see red is down near 700 and violet is, uh, blue violet is at 400. So just in case that does escape your memory, that's just a reminder in text that the SQA uh, cannot take away from you. <laughs> uh, and if you're looking for approximate wavelengths to go with any particular colors they ever quote in any of the questions, um, then you can find a sort of primer here if you need, uh, from red all the way up to blue violet. Um, and ultraviolet as well, in fact. Now I see that, 310 per ultraviolet. These are all in nanometers, of course. Um, the main thing that I was going to talk about today that I completely forgot to add on to my absorption spectroscopy um, is to do with, why is there a colour wheel in the data book? What on earth is this doing here? I, and there's a very good reason for this being here. Um, once upon a time, they expected you to know that if a sample here, for example, let's say we had a sample of a chemical, you shine red, uh, green and blue, or the whole spectrum in here, red, green and blue light. One of these is absorbed, for example, let's say the blue is absorbed, um, so it doesn't make it through, uh, whereas the green and the red make it through, then you were expected to know what colour you would observe here. They have uh, turned this into a Love Island version of itself, and instead now ask you questions, that's what the function of this colour wheel is. So you can magically know the answer to this. So I'm saying that blue light is being absorbed by the sample. Red and green make it through. So if we have a look at this, we find blue. This is the colour that's being absorbed. And if you look across at the other side of the colour wheel, you find yellow. That is the colour you will see coming out the far end. So that's the purpose of this colour wheel, folks. It might sound a bit harsh, me calling it the Love Island version, but in reality you can probably work out the brighter amongst you. This is not a switch. It doesn't just absorb the blue or not absorb the blue, there's different intensities of blue that sneak through here. So this is not quite as simple as the SQA would have you believe, there's a shocker, but that's the way they want you to work it now for these questions. So, absorption spectroscopy, how are you supposed to know what colour you will see? And the answer is, you use this colour wheel. Somebody got back to me with a similar question on emission spectroscopy and the simple answer to that is um, you'll see the colours that are being given off. Uh, another uh, student asked me to clarify the difference between emission and absorption and how do you know which is happening with a particular sample, which is a good question. The answer to that is if your particular sample, if you had it in a completely black room, would you still be able to see what's happening? From the sample. If you can see the sample, like a candle or a neon light um, or a distant supernova, if you can see it happening, then it's a mission. If, on the other hand, you have your can of iron brew in a dark room, you're not going to be seeing anything um, because that is absorption and there's no light to be absorbed in a dark room. Hopefully that's helped clear this up. Thank you.